You know, a year really isn't that much time when you really think about it. It seems like it, but it isn't. It goes by just like that. It really does. And it's crazy to think that a year ago, the 2020 Royal Rumble was being held in a stadium. In a stadium full of fans at that. And it was the night that Edge made his return to the WWE as an active in-ring competitor after almost nine years away. That was a year ago. It feels like 2020 aged us all by at least five to ten, if not more years. But yeah, that happened. And it wasn't that long ago, really. So, looking ahead to this 2021 Royal Rumble show, I wonder just how weird of a night it's going to feel like. WrestleMania with no fans was really, really weird. SummerSlam with no fans, weird. The other pay-per-views are weird, yes, I agree. But the Royal Rumble to me is a different animal. Because the Royal Rumble, in no small part, owes its success in recent years and throughout the years to the fans in the arena getting pumped up and excited when the clock count, next countdown clock would start. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And you hear the buzzer. And then you either hear crickets from the people because they don't care who came out. It's a job or somebody they don't give a crap about. Or you get like the, oh, yay. Or you get the, yes, that's my dude, that's my chick. Or then you get the, holy shit, oh my God, Edge is back. What the hell does this all mean? My life is meaningful once again. I can live. I can live. You get none of that on Sunday. And no matter how much Kevin Dunn tries to pump in crowd noise to recreate that atmosphere, it's just not going to be the same, like, Oh, God. It gives me some trepidation about this show. And in general, I have some trepidation about this show. Because looking at this card, it is rife for the possibility of doing some things that fans are really, really going to like. It is rife with the possibility of you could have some really iffy, shaky, questionable decisions. And it is rife with the possibilities of potentially being just a train wreck show. And I don't know which one I'm here for the most out of those three options. But I certainly wouldn't turn down any of them. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting time Sunday night. If you look at this card, you got Carmella taking on Sasha Banks for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Personally to me. Feels like they've cared a little more about Carmella in this feud. And she's blonde with tits, so that's a Vince McMahon, Kevin Dunn specialty. Ain't that right? This whole story doesn't feel like it's been built around making Sasha the big deal and emphasizing her her mainstream notoriety and trying to make her into a next-level star. It feels like it's almost designed to say, hey, we didn't do this out of WWE stuff with you, so as a result, we don't really care, and we're going to bring you down a notch or two. I mean, this story to me, I much rather would have had Bianca and Bailey be feuding over the SmackDown women's title right now than Sasha and Carmella. And even if I look at this match, like I would assume Sasha Banks would win, but God only knows at this point. And even if she does, like who are you really setting up to for her to wrestle at WrestleMania? I'm just saying then you've got the Women's Tag Team Championship match. It's Asuka and Charlotte Flair versus Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. We're back here again. Last year, Charlotte killed Shayna Baszler's momentum during WrestleMania season at the Royal Rumble. And kind of Bianca Belair's last year too, of course. And certainly did Rhea Ripley's at WrestleMania. But is this where they tease friction between Asuka and Charlotte Flair? Like, they really couldn't have teamed these two ladies up without doing, planning something for them at Mania. Like, you have to assume, wouldn't you, at this point, that these two, it's not about a two-woman power trip or anything. It's about, ah, Charlotte's back, so you got to let her politic her ass into 
a big spot at WrestleMania. Oh, God. LOL, Charlotte wins. Yeehaw. So we'll see if they make that split here. I'd assume they would. But if they don't, they've got to be doing it really soon. But, oh, God. Could you imagine? I'll talk about that possibility in a few minutes. Drew McIntyre defends the WWE Championship against Goldberg. <laughs> God, I'm waiting with such bated breath for this. How brutal and bad is this match going to be? How much will the fans shit themselves if Goldberg actually wins the title from Drew? <laughs> like, whenever this match comes on, this is when shit's about to get real, real interesting, in my humble opinion, because goddamn, there's all types of possibilities of what you can do here. And it is very likely that fans could be ranting and raving and raging after this match. <laughs> and again, I'm here for it. Uh, the women's Royal Rumble match, the first of two Rumble matches, and I would certainly assume that the women's Rumble match will go on earlier in the show than the men's. Um, I look at this match and I say, okay, so many things are geared towards Bianca Belair winning this Royal Rumble. Like, is that because they're actually understanding they've got something special with Bianca and that they care and that they want to try and make her into a next level star? Or is this a thing of where they're making it so obvious and they're setting it up so much on a path where it seems like it's the undeniable future reality to come that they're going to swerve us? The swerve is certainly a possibility. The biggest swerve I could see is Charlotte is back. I'm just saying, you have to imagine she's setting up for a future match with Asuka, isn't she? Well, if she is, then why wouldn't she, um, why wouldn't she, yeah, fuck. Does it even matter? Is Asuka the champ? I believe she is. Ah, who gives a fuck? Yeah, she is. That's right. That's right. Because her and Alexa Bliss wrestled on Raw Monday night. This is what happens when you record videos at 2.30 in the morning, folks. And you've been up since 6 a.m. You start to get to the end of your string for the day. Just like I would be at the end of my fucking string if they had Charlotte win this goddamn Royal Rumble match for the second year in a row. You thought the internet flamed when she did it last year. Nah, probably enough idiots that actually have lowered their standards enough where they think she's good. Ugh. Imagine if she did it this time, though. Like, there would be a revolt. <laughs> and as pissed off as I would be, I mean, you guys know me. There's a little troll in me for sure. I love train wrecks. And it certainly would be good for my business here on this channel to be able to bitch about Charlotte a little bit more. Especially if she was the one to eliminate Bianca Belair again. Woo -hoo -hoo! <laughs> Sending Bianca a message about how politics are played in mayonnaise land. <laughs> or in this case in plastic land with Charlotte. Ah, fuck. Let's hope they don't overthink this. Let's hope they don't get too cute and they just have Bianca Belair win the damn Women's Royal Rumble. Don't overthink this, WWE. Now, what I don't understand is that they did it with both the Women's and the Men's Rumble. Like, why are they giving away shit ahead of time? They had a match at WWE backstage where Natalia's getting spot number 30. That's her prize for winning that match. Why are we spoiling this crap? Yes, you've had storylines over the year where that's been part of it, but it was a storyline and it was part of it. Here, it's just randomly thrown the fuck out there. You didn't need to do that. Why the hell are you undercutting yourself to spite yourself? The hell? And then you look at the men's Royal Rumble match, transitioning off of that one. You couldn't wait until the Rumble to bring back Braun Strowman? Like, that's how shitty this is. That seems to show how little they actually care about their WWE Network events. God only knows what it's going to look like in six months or a year once they're on the Peacock Network. Like, you brought back Braun two days before the Royal Rumble. You couldn't have fucking waited? 
And then they reveal that Randy Orton's going to come into the Rumble number one and Edge is coming in number two. So either mid-40s Edge is going to go on one hell of a run and last all the way to the end and win the Rumble or we just put these two at the beginning and you're going to ask them to go a while and then step aside so you can get to what the hell you really want to get to. Maybe you're going to have Orton go the distance, but then The Fiend eliminates him somehow, some way. God only fucking knows. And I don't know what to make out of this Men's Royal Rumble match. I really don't. Like, to me, it seems like they've been pointing at Daniel Bryan, but I've seen what people have said on Twitter about they don't feel like there's really much of a story there other than the fact that, you know, he hasn't won it, but what has he done? I think it's a valid comparison. Now, I've talked about the fact that with Roman and Daniel Bryan, there is potential for story. And I'm a sucker for stories. People always think that I'm a sucker for size and steroids. No, I'm a sucker for stories. That's what I love above all else. So I'm not just going to rant and rave about how Daniel Bryan is uniquely unqualified to be this year's Royal Rumble winner. If they had Daniel Bryan win this year's Royal Rumble, there's a story there with him and Roman Reigns that you could tell until WrestleMania. And most importantly of all for me, if you put Daniel Bryan in that spot, you ain't having him beat the frickin' Tribal Chief, so it guarantees a Mania win for Roman, the head of the table. This is how it should be. And I know some of you idiots will sit there and say, you gotta call me the journey, you gotta have Daniel motherfucker Bryan win the belt at WrestleMania. No, you don't. Not every Rumble winner has to win at WrestleMania. And I'm not sitting there and killing Roman's momentum so some of you can get your jollies off of some shit that you wish would have happened six or seven goddamn years ago. You're not going to put the belt on a guy like Daniel Bryan right now. That's dumb. And only dumbass marks would do that, which plenty of you are certainly perfectly qualified to do. They don't seem to believe in Keith Lee enough to put him in that spot. Biggie's the IC champion, so you could get there. But does it really feel like they're getting there? And even if you do, like you're going to send him at Roman? Like, I don't, I don't think that works that well, really. I mean, Roman would have to shit on him the entire time about not taking stuff seriously, and that's disrespectful. Like, it can work because Roman Reigns is fucking magnificent right now. But, no. Like, to me, you've only really got two options to win the Royal Rumble. One is Edge. And even then, it's like, you going to have him go the entire time? But you could have Edge face off against a Drew McIntyre, and Edge is so great, he can make it work. Or you can have Edge challenge the tribal chief, the head of the table, bring his ass to SmackDown. Hells yeah, I'm on board for that. And we could get one hell of a story between Edge and Roman Reigns heading into WrestleMania. Like if you can't see that and you're in the WWE, you're fucking insane. Especially Edge coming back off of the injury. There's all types of story making potential right there. So they probably won't do that. The only other option you have is Brock Lesnar. Yeah, I threw that name out there. You know I'm no big Brock guy. But shit, either way you've got a story where you could have him go after Drew McIntyre. This is the guy that eliminated me in the Royal Rumble last year and... This is the guy that I fucking lost the title to and all of this crap. And you know what you can say? You can make that work. And God knows Raw needs a boost. Or if you want to go really playing with the big boys and Fox gets its way, you bring in Brock Lesnar to challenge Roman Reigns and you say, oh, we're doing that crap again. The dynamics have changed significantly here. Significantly. Now Roman's the baby face. With Paul Heyman. Now Brock's wondering what the hell's going on. And the whole manner of which Roman conducts himself now would just take that story to a whole different level than we ever got out of it before. Like to me, that's it. The women's rumble, don't be stupid, it should be Bianca Belair, end of discussion. The men's Royal Rumble winner should either be Edge or Brock Lesnar. Because that's where the best potential stories are going to be. Now, if it ends up being somebody like a Daniel Bryan, I will poke fun at some of you guys, but that's out of my heart, out of love. 
but I won't bury it like maybe some others do. I think it's kind of foolish. I think it's a waste of a rumble win spot personally. And I agree that the story there in and of itself is kind of flimsy as the justification to have a win. I think there's more story once you would send him towards Roman. But I like the thought of with Edge, you can send him at either champion. With Brock, you can send him at either champion. You could have him appear on both shows. You could leave it up in the air a little while. Well, Danny Ryan is pretty cut and dry. If he wins, you know who he's challenging. Predictable is not always bad, but you know, for a company that really needs some spontaneity right now, I would like to see some spontaneity right now. I know there was somebody, I can't remember who it is, and I apologize for getting who it was, that tweeted about a source said that there have been some different finishes bandied about for the Royal Rumble and they scare them. One of them has them scared to death. You know, which makes me wonder if it's something related to The Fiend, thinking about it from a literal standpoint or a figurative standpoint of they're going to have freaking Goldberg lose, but then go in and win the Royal Rumble. <laughs> oh, God. I want something juicy to come out of this Rumble show on Sunday night. And hopefully it comes out of one of these two Rumble matches. Where it better not come out of, though, is this last man standing match for the Universal Championship. This is how you do business. You let these guys go out there. Main event, main event of the pay-per-view. Let them go 20 to 30 minutes and Roman wins. That's what you do. It's the only option. You're not taking the belt off of Roman, nor should you take the belt off of Roman. And can you imagine entertaining the thought of taking the belt off of Roman right now? For Kevin fucking Owens? Nah, I'm good. Owens is a guy that can dance with the guy that can do some business. But I'm not putting the belt on Kevin Owens, especially heading into WrestleMania. Hell with that. Ugh. I just wonder if they'll be able to top their other matches that they had. This is a lot of pressure. As they've had a couple of really good ones. The chemistry between these two guys is really, really good. The story they've told in both of their featured matches have been outstanding. So there is a lot of pressure here to really, really deliver in this match. And I expect him to be able to do so. So I think Roman versus KO is going to be great. I can't wait to see how Drew and Goldberg is put together. <laughs> I'm sure for Sasha Banks and Carmella, so many of you Sasha stands are going to sit there and pump, pump up her match as being great, even if it's not. I don't know what to expect out of it. Um... But, oh man, oh God, oh God, please let Goldberg win. Please let Brock Lesnar come back and win. That way either Brock's challenging Goldberg or he's challenging Roman. <laughs> and no, don't please have Charlotte win. But if you do, I'll be ready with guns blazing. But it's Bianca Belair's time. The momentum is there. You have featured her as a clear and present option, as a favorite for the Rumble, so do it. Don't get too damn cute here. But you guys tell me, what do you expect to see out of the Royal Rumble Sunday night? Who are your picks to win the men's and women's Royal Rumble matches? Do we get any big surprises? Is Goldberg actually going to go over on Drew McIntyre? Woo-hoo-hoo! The possibilities are endless, so tell me in the comments.